This Tech Channel video is brought to you by our Tech Channel partner, JLC PCB. JLC PCB is a perfect solution to make your PCB board ideas a reality. Hey friends, welcome to Flight Test Tech. I'm Josh. And I'm Tanner. Today we're going to be showing you all about breadboards. Uh, first of all, what is a breadboard? Well, that's a good question. A breadboard is basically a way to rapidly prototype your circuit board. So one thing that's really cool is if you have an idea in your head and you want to see if it works, you don't have to go ahead and design on the computer, wait a week or so from JLC PCB to get your board, and then to find out ultimately there's something you needed to change. Right, so it's, it's great for, to be able to test what you're doing, yeah. make sure that you can prove out your concept before you go through the process of ordering a circuit board. Awesome, now breadboards are incredibly useful even up to an advanced level here. So this is something if you learn early on and you learn to pull it into the you know process of designing early, you're gonna have a lot more success but also it's just a really great versatile tool. Today we're gonna to be showing you how the breadboard works, the signals, where they go, and how you can use it. So hopefully when you're done with this video, you can start dreaming and do it. Now there's lots of different colors on this, lots of different pins here. They all mean something, don't they? Yeah, so most of them are just labels to tell you like what pin row this is. Um, but basically, there's, there's certain connections and directions that, that the signal will go on the breadboard. Okay. So this particular one, I think this is one of the most common layouts for a breadboard. It's got power rails that go down the side. Um, that goes this pin all the way down to this pin is connected that whole row. And this one's labeled for ground. That's just to help you out if you wanted to make that a ground rail. And then um, again, we have the same thing for the positive signal. That row right next to it is connected all the way down. Super. That exists on both sides. So you could have a power rail on this side that's say five volts and a power rail on, rail on this side that's say um, three and a half volts or 3.3. Fantastic. And then do you have a hard break in the middle here? Is this where your signal rows are? Yeah, so then here's where you would actually lay out most of your circuit. And when you need power, you can tap off one of these rails and bring it over. Um, these rails go this direction, but from that point into the center, is the direction changes 90 degrees. So now this signal goes here. These five pins are connected together. Then there's a break in the center. These are not connected, but then these five pins are connected. Gotcha. So well, that makes a lot of sense. If you're going to pull power, you can just pull power over to this row, and then you'd have that. Going exactly. Over. So okay. then you can have it going, you know, down to here to power up whatever this part of the circuit is. Now there's a common spacing with a lot of the components that you have, and that's 2.5 millimeters, correct? Yeah, 2.54 is kind of the common header spacing, and, and these breadboards are, are set up that way. Yep. That means as you get more advanced and stuff, things like the what, Arduino chips and uh, EEPROMs and all that stuff, that's generally? Yeah, integrated circuits, um, through hole integrated circuits will sit right in the center of this okay. with pins going off this side and this side. Very cool. So, Very cool. The other thing I should mention too is like this, this row here is not connected to the one right next to it. So those are, those are completely separate. If you guys were doing this and you wanted to design, say, an LED kit for your uh, airplane, you could actually map this out, put your power to it, and test everything, uh, and then at that point, then go over and start your board design, once you know it works. Yep, exactly. So put it on here, test it. It's a rapid prototyping device. Fantastic. And then go from there. And it's reusable, too. Absolutely. When you're done, pull all the parts back off, start over. Now, these guys aren't very expensive either, are they? Um, no, I, and I, I don't know offhand what they cost, but they're between five and $10. There you go, that's perfect. And I, I've seen sometimes when people lay them out, they'll even jump or like to another breadboard and stuff, they'll kind of just build out and stuff. Yep, I've done prototypes where you have a, a whole piece of plywood that's got, you know, it's three feet by two feet and it's got <laughs> breadboards all over it. So. Yeah. so one thing we're also gonna be doing here is we're gonna be putting links below to all these different components. So if you're gonna be doing PCB boards, you can actually buy a kit that will give you the ability to do design with some basic components here. Incredibly affordable, but also so much fun just to play with. Mm. Uh, speaking of which, why don't we just go ahead and make a basic circuit? Yeah, so I'm just gonna put together a really simple circuit. We're gonna power it by um, three and a half volts. Okay. And we're gonna put a switch on it. When you push the switch, you're gonna get a light, so. Very cool. Um, I'll start with the switch. I'll put that right in the middle here. That's just a push button tactile switch. And then I'll position our LED. And I'm gonna put it in just like that. Okay. So in this case, we're gonna use the switch. With LEDs have polarity. I've put the positive lead right in the positive rail. I put the ground lead um, on one side of the button. Okay. Okay. You can see that this this one that it's connected to here runs all the way down to the to that side of the button. Then the other side of the button here is gonna come back up, and I'm gonna use a jumper wire to connect ground. To that side of the button. Because you gotta complete the circuit. Yep. Okay, so now what we've got is our two power rails are being supplied, um, positive along 
the, the positive rail, ground along the ground rail. That comes in here, um, goes to the LED on the positive side, then through the LED down to the switch, across the switch over here to this jumper and into the ground rail. So now if we push our button, we get a light. You're good to go. Yep. Fantastic, that's as simple as that. Now if you wanted to add more components onto this, what you could do then basically is you could just basically play off of that, uh, that uh, ground and that. Uh... Yeah, so anything that we put in parallel with this LED would also be powered by um, by that same circuit when the button's closed. So you have a buzzer. So here. I got a buzzer here, we can put this in place. Um, again, we're just connecting the positive side to the positive. We're sharing that ground rail that's supp supplied by the push button. Okay. And now... Beautiful. So our goal here is we're taking slowly down the runway of learning more about PCV board design and circuit board design, how components work and stuff. This is definitely a must. Before you go ahead and go much further down, get some components, play with it, because this is really something, even with you being at the level you are, you start up breadboards. We always start our designs with either a breadboard or a development board or the combination of both. Okay. So we're always trying to build you know, the, the prototype circuit yeah. before we spend the, the money to build a circuit board. I love it. And this dovetails exactly what we do with light test here. Whenever we're designing an airplane, we immediately go through and we use what we've learned. We design an airplane, we just get it in the air to observe what it does. This gives you the opportunity to kind of do the same thing on an electronic level where you can just kind of see what it does, get your mind wrapped around it, get a picture in your head, and it's gonna make your process so much easier. So when you do go to JLC PCB with your board design, you have confidence when you get it back, it's like, man, I can't put this thing together. Yeah, you can fail quickly with this so that you can figure out what you've done like wrong that. and get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, well Tanner, this is wonderful. Uh, guys, make sure you hit the subscribe bell. We are gonna continue developing here. We're gonna get more advanced with our circuit boards. We hope this helped. Tanner, thank you so much for being part of this. Absolutely. Awesome, see you next time.